But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some halal fun. Now, as usual, you know, Muslims in the comment section, when we make a video, uh, you know, we stay for five hours asking Muslims to call us. And then when we leave, suddenly every Abdul follower of the God of the Muta is a hero. I mean, we stay hour after hour and say any Abdul who want to call us, who want to join us, Nobody. As dead as their God and their prophet. And then you will see Abdul saying, like this guy, his name is Abdullah. He says, I'm willing to debate the Christian prince. Christian prince, are you willing to debate me? And for sure, Christian prince is afraid now. And this is why he came online today, because he's aware, uh, sorry, he's worried that you might call him. Come to my stream right now. What about you make your stream and you call me still? Doesn't matter, I will call you. Give me, here we go, give me your sky. Potatoes. Potatoes. Go to your stream, give me your Skype, and I will call you. No problem. Potatoes. Then we go to other Abdul. Let me see, I'm looking for the comment. Uh, you know, the Abdul are very excited. And, uh, you know, the more they try to defend, actually, the more they insult their God and we make, make us laugh at them. And this is actually the purpose of what we do here is to show the Christians how easy it, it is to show you uh, the stupidity of this cult. And those who follow this cult is really, they are no better. I mean, you cannot be a person who is really intelligent and you believe there's a God who will make your penis endless because you bow down for him and you kill some Christians and Jews. And then when you go to heaven, if you are a murderer, Allah will make you a green bird. The end of the day, you are a green chicken. We are chicken here or chicken there, doesn't matter. Um, I'm just looking for the comment. I hope they did not delete them. Uh, one of the Mohammedan, he said, where is the comment? One of the Mohammedan, he said, why the God of the Christians, he uh, blamed the women Blame all the women for the for for the act of one woman. Uh, let us see where we can find it. Maybe here. Okay. So here we have this Abdul. Let us see this one first. Christians say God is a truth. Christians also say that all truth and reasons come from God. Christian also claimed that God is a trinity. Trinity is a square circle. The trinity is a contradiction. This is mean, the Christian truth is a square circle. <laughs> and I answered him yesterday. This is from yesterday at night. I love the Muslim philosophy, especially if the source of the truth is coming from the Shin Allah, by the way. Is it circle square, which means the shin? 
<laughs> and then uh, here he said to me, you are talking about lizard. Isn't it your Bible that says that God curses snakes because of one snake, Genesis 3? Uh, you see, you are an ignorant again, and I can show you the same story in your books. And that's why we laugh at Muslims when they try to make themselves uh, a winner. You see, my God, when he curses a snake, uh, because Satan, he presents the snake. However, it is amazing that your prophet, he described Islam as a snake. And all of us read you that the snake is a truly the enemy of the man. No man would like to live in a place there is a snake with him, unless he is something, you know, something wrong with him. If we go what we see what Muhammad said, uh, and as you see, you know, we don't say things without proof and reference. I'm just finding the hadith. Uh. And now you will say to me, well, uh, the Prophet, he is not describing Islam as a snake, but he is describing Islam where it's coming from. And that even will be more stupid of you to say, because, uh, you know, uh, if Islam is going back to where it's coming from, and that is a hole of a snake, that means Islam is really a snake. And even your God, Allah, name is a snake. You know, if we draw right now the name of Allah, uh, let us see. Okay, let us put the hadith here. Give me a second. The snake God and the snake religion and the snake prophet. What is left? Let us see. This website is not opening, so I'm trying. I'm not sure why this website is not working. Let us see. Yes, guys, is the uh, sunnah.com is working for you? If somebody was able to open the hadith of sunnah.com about the snake, posted the link, and then for some reason, I could not, it's not loading with me. <clears throat> I will try to refresh my page. Okay. Here we go. I, uh, it's, it's working now, actually. It's working. I made it, it, it's fine. So look what uh, your uh, uh, stupid prophet said. You just admitted 
that God, he cursed the snake. That the snake actually is an animal. We are not talking really about a snake as a snake. We are talking about the devil. However, every snake is an enemy for a human being. So now, a human being, he lost his security, and a snake is going to be his enemy. Now, if we ask you why a snake should bite the man, you say because she is a snake. Thank you very much. Here, we see that Muhammad describing the religion of Allah. And he is the one is saying, and this is Sahih Hadith. Verily, Islam is started as something strange, and I will agree, it's very strange, stupid cult. It would again revert between two brackets, this is your Muslim translation, not mine, to its old position of being strange, which means few people will believe in it, just as it started, and it would recede between the two mosques just as a serpent crawls back in its hole if we go right now and we check uh, what this guy is speaking about we will find that this is exactly what the bible described that a snake the serpent and then you ask yourself how it is possible that the Satan in the Bible is the serpent and then the serpent in Islam is Islam he quoted for us Genesis number 3 and we will go there You can read any translation you wish, you know. The serpent, which is presenting the devil, is Islam. And this is coming from the mouth of Muhammad himself. Now ask yourself, why Muhammad, from all the creatures in this earth, He chose the serpent, a serpent. Any Muslim can tell us? Any Muslim can have explanation for us why Muhammad he chose the serpent. I mean, is a serpent present something good in Islam? Anyone? Why he did not say like a lion? Why he did not say like a fox? Uh, you know, why he did not say uh, like a dove? You know, isn't Islam is peace as Muslims they claim? So why Muhammad he described Islam as a serpent? Any Muslim? In fact, the Muslim believe that there is a serpent protecting the Kaaba. And they have videos about it in YouTube. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? One of the tools of Allah in the punishment of the grave, Allah he will send a bold serpent who torture the Muslim in his grave for his sin. Like he took, let us say he took someone, he's a Christian as a friend. So Allah he will send the serpent. If we go right now and we search in the hadith, And we try to find what and how the Muslims see a snake. The short-tailed snake and the snake having stripes over it should be killed. 
you see remember the question of this guy saying why you know all the snake is cursed you know what is that why all the snakes should be killed this is your prophet and here is even describing some snakes and he claimed that they are genie satan your prophet he says delivering a sermon saying kill snakes all snakes and kill the one who have etc description too because the arab used to spare those and kill the one who have a short tail so if we take your question which is supposedly an an expose to the christian belief how that will work for you why your prophet he is saying you kill the snake right and then this guy in in the same post uh, uh, he questioned why God he is punishing the women all the women when one woman is the one who commits sin let me see if I can find uh, his comment let us see Ah, and he made a comment actually before we go there he said Jeremiah he said your God is a deceiver the, the, um, uh, Zechariah Abdullah saying by the way change your name because Zechariah mean the one who belong to, Yah to Yahweh so you Muslims are stupid when you call yourself Zechariah copying a name from the Old Testament because that will make you not worshiping Allah that will make you a person who worship Yahweh you are stupid like your prophet again so he said in Jeremiah 27, it says, you, de you, you deceived me, Lord. I was deceived. You overpowered me, and etc. So if you read the verse, you will see that the person is speaking, that I've been deceived because you give me power. He is giving himself an excuse. You give me, you know, I've been deceived because I thought I am strong, I am etc. And then I found that I am nobody. So this is what he meant. And it's not God saying I'm a deceiver, you stupid son of Muta. But if we go in the Quran, we will find your God, is the one who deceive everybody to commit sin this person in Jeremiah he is saying you deceived me because you gave me health you gave me power and I thought I can do everything I thought I can depend in myself but if we go in the Quran we will see the deception which is deception where it says the one who deceived by Allah nobody can guide him and the funny this verse was uh, uh, given by Muhammad or given to Muhammad supposedly when Muhammad he could not explain why people they are not accepting Islam Muhammad he wanted to give himself an excuse and as usual he is a fool like the rest of them so look what he said and this is the Muslim translation not my translation so he said then what is the matter with you that you are divided into parties about the hypocrite Allah cast them back to disbelief <laughs> who is the one who cast them <laughs> you see there the verse you quote from me from the Bible is about a person saying I've been deceived because what you gave me and this is the case for everybody human being when he's healthy when he is wealthy he think he is God. He think this is, what, this is how atheism actually is established because they think they do not need God. And as long as they are doing fine, why we need God? And then one day when the guy is dying, you know, he starts saying, God, help me. You know, the second you are weak, you remember God. The second you are strong, you don't believe in God. And who is the one who gives you strength? God. So the deception you are talking about is not God really deceiving the person, it's the person deceiving himself by what God gave him. So if a person, he was a fool, that is not an excuse. However, here, who can really can stop the deception of Allah? Read with me the Quran saying, Do you want to guide him whom Allah made go astray? In Arabic, actually, it doesn't say go astray. It says yudlil. Yudlil means deceive. 
So Allah is making it so clear that the ones I deceived and all mankind are deceived by Allah. He is a serpent. And this is why his name looked like a serpent. If we write the name of Allah in the screen, I will use my mouse. You know, I don't have a pen, screen pen or something. So let us use to do this. This is your God. This is the name of your God. It is literally a snake. If you write it in full to make you happy, that would be like this. But the real name is this one. Lah. Alhamdulillah. The moon god. So your god Allah, his name is written in Arabic as a snake. And you know, like in the old days, in the ancient time, they used to use a drawing to make words. So the name Allah, it doesn't look like a snake, like as an accident, and like maybe it, eh, it's happened this way. No, this is a very ancient name worshipped by many, many, many generations for thousands of years before Muhammad. And La is nothing but a snake. And those people, when they make a language, simply they draw images, like the same as like if you if you read the Chinese uh, uh, Chinese language. You know, you will see like the house <clears throat> is, a, is a drawing of a house, you know. So they draw images to present what they are talking about. The same as like the Indian in the old days, the American Indian. Here we see that Allah is saying that are you going to guide the one who Allah deceived? And then you ask yourself here. So Muhammad was sent to guide who? You can change, by the way, the translation to any translation you want, you know, any translation you wish, other than they are stupid, but just for the sake of entertainment. You know, we are laughing, and Islam is a joke. So what is the purpose of this uh, a God who do uh, cause people to go astray? And here you will see something unique about this verse. Some translation they say that you made me, you, you misguided me. You misguided me. Until now we see translation saying go astray. But it's the same at the end of the day. But this is not really accurate for the Arabic because it says you made me, you misguided me uh, 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 using the word uh, deceive me so you deceive me and you made me go astray and the one who Allah sent astray you will never find for him a way between two bracket guidance will all the people of Quraysh and according to Muslims all the people in the time of Muhammad they were misguided who is the one who misguided them Allah so how you are going to guide those who are misguided? And then here we ask ourselves, if the one who misguide people is Allah, what is the job of shaitan? Even Satan in Islam, he was misguided by Allah. Let us read together. Chapter 7, verse number 16. Chapter 15, verse number 39. Let us read this one first. <laughs> it turned to be that shaitan is a victim of Allah too. You see, the Muslim, they claim that the one behind every sin they do is shaitan. 
But as you see, shaitan was himself been deceived by Allah. Allah, he did not say that not, I did not do that to you. He confirmed that. And here, as long as we are in this chapter speaking about Adam and Eve, because later he said, uh, Christian Prince, can you answer this one? Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, let us see. In which comment he said about Eve? Okay. Maybe here, let's see this one here. Uh, I'm just looking at the comment, trying to find his comment so we can laugh. I'm not sure where it is. Maybe he deleted. So he said uh, that why your God, he is punishing the women, all the women, because of one woman mistake. Let us read the Quran together and see if that is true or not. You know, God, he never punished the women. Uh, only God, he punished the man and the women. And that is showing you the hypocrisy of the Muhammadan. So, when we go in the story in, uh, in Genesis, actually, we will find that the story describing for us that both Adam and Eve, they committed sin, and both Adam of Eve and Eve, they were punished. And each one of them, his punishment was, was uh, uh, severe, and the number one severe punishment, both of them, they would die. <laughs> and the reason of that will be many, will be sick, you know, snake, whatever, you know, you are exposed. You are exposed because of your sin. You are not, not in heaven no more. So you choose not to be in heaven, then this is your, I told you from the beginning, if you eat from this tree, you die. Hmm? Then we, uh, uh, when we read in the Quran, we will see the story of Adam and Eve, and it is really funny. Here it says, Allah, he said to Adam, do will you and your wife, and by the way, nowhere in the Quran even says who is the wife of Adam, maybe it was Shakira, in paradise, and eat therefore as, bo as you both wish, but approach not from this tree. Here, this is a copy of what is written in the Bible, obviously, right? And later we will go and see the interpretation for this verse, because later, you know, the, 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 the interpretation for those verses, you will make your die laughing, and you will see how Muhammad, he have no idea what he's talking about. So go and eat uh, from everything in the, in the paradise, but don't eat from this tree. Okay, wonderful. And then, Satan... He whispered to them. He wanted them to know what this God is hiding from them. And he said to them, Your Lord didn't forbid you this tree, save yourself, become an angels, or become immorals, immortals. And here you see the stupidity of this uh, uh, statement, because Adam, he lived in heaven, so why he would, he would die anyway? He's already immortal. This is what immortal is about, you know, you live forever, you are in heaven. Uh, When, when the Quran trying to copy a statement from the Old Testament, he add his own flavor and he mix it with, uh, with different, uh, you know, 
uh, story and Muhammad trying to make it look nice or maybe it look even more convincing from the Old Testament of the Jews. So he say, uh, and shaitan swore by Allah to them both saying verily, I am one of sincere will or, or you know, uh, wishers for you both. And here you're seeing that the shaitan, he is swearing by Allah, which is proving that shaitan is a Muslim. And actually Muhammad, he confirmed that in many occasions. And then when they, or he mislead them with deception. And when they tested from the tree, which was hiding from them, or uh, hiding from them yeah, of their shame, private part, they become manifest to them. And they began to stick together the leaves. Hmm. Interesting. But if you, before you go here, if we go back, you will see already Shaitan. He told Allah, I am, because you mislead me, I'm going to mislead them. Do you see it? Because you mislead me, I'm going to mislead them. Allah, he ordered shaitan to get out of heaven. <laughs> Allah, he ordered Adam to stay in heaven. Allah, he kicked shaitan from heaven, but shaitan is in heaven still. <laughs> You know, one of the funny things that Muhammad and they say, if Allah wants to do something, he say, be is going to be. So here we go. Allah, he said to Shaitan, get out of it. Between two bracket paradise. Disgraced, expelled. Hmm? And here you see the stupidity of this Quran. So whoever of mankind will follow you, but there is no mankind except in paradise. And he is not going to be in paradise no more. Where, what mankind? This is the time of Adam and Eve. So whoever of mankind who? And the question you need to ask yourself after he kicked him out of paradise and the Muslim they say if Allah he say a word the word will happen immediately. So Allah decided to do uh, to, to serve eviction uh, paper to Iblis. And the eviction paper says, you leave immediately. This is the order of Allah. Now, do you think Iblis, he was taking his baloney? I like the word baloney in English. Hmm? Why Iblis is still in heaven? So Allah kicked him out of heaven. And then Iblis, he come back to them in heaven. Maybe he have a double key. I mean, think about it. He's Shaitan. Man, Shaitan, oh man, Rabbi, oh man. So Shaitan was kicked out. And now Shaitan is coming back to deceive them. Now, going back to our topic. When this Abdul, he said, that why your God, he blamed women for all the sin, all the women for the sin of one woman. Let us go, and actually I gave him uh, a quotation from his Quran, but he's a, you know, they are stupid, they make fun of their own religion, by the way, when they make those things. They forgot that their prophet is a thief, and most of the stories he have it there is coming from different books, obviously. So, Muhammad, he said, that if not Eve, No women betray her husband. So when the son of Muta is saying that the Bible, why the Bible is saying that women, all women, would be punished for the sin of Eve? The Bible says men and women, both of them, they are out of heaven, and both of them, they are going to be punished for their sin. Not women only, you are a, you are a, you are a scam like your prophet. But I find it very irony and funny that a Mohammedan who believed that his mother, if she been divorced by his father three times, his mother, she have to go and get ifed by a new husband in order to go back to her children. And he is talking now, what is the fault a woman she did? 
let me ask you what is the fault your mother she did when she was divorced by her husband three time chapter 2 verse number 230 what about your prophet aka Allah aka the snake say if the man he divorced his wife three time she cannot go back to him unless he got ifed himself by somebody because he is the one who divorced her So what is the fault of the women in this case to the point she have to go and get ifed by a new guy so she can go back to the previous guy? I mean, even people who buy sex toys, they will not use a sex toy used by somebody else. Where is the respect of women? Where is the respect of your mother? So now your father... He divorced your mother. And who? Look, who, what, 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 what here? I'm going to stop here. Why your father, he divorced your mother? We will find the answer in the Quran. Allah, he decided to open a Haributer school. He sent two angels. One, his name is Harut. And the other name is Marut. Sound like Armenian. So Allah, he sent in chapter 2, verse 102, two angels from Haributer movie. And their job... Harut and Mamrud, they land down in the Babylon Tower. You know, it makes sense. You know, I mean, they are coming from sky and they need a ladder to come down. And the Babylon Tower at that time was the highest. Like, you know, the tower of, of uh, in, the, in, in, Paris, in Paris, you know. So, makes sense. This is not a fiction story. This is a true story. So, they come down in this tower, Harut and Marut. And then from the window of the tower, they put a sign saying, Okay, we are two angels and we are going to teach you black magic. All right, and this black magic was revealed by Allah to the angels. Look, who is the one who taught them? The big Hoributar is Allah. He taught the angels black magic, and what is the purpose of the Hoributar school by Harut and Marut? Peace be upon them. It says, to, and by the way, before you join the school, disclaimer: they make you sign disclaimer. It says, the angel would say, we do not teach anyone unless they say we are a trial. So don't disbelieve by practicing magic. Like, what the heck? So you open a school to teach them how to practice magic and you are saying to them, don't practice magic? So what the point? The brother and sisters. Ah, uh, here we go. This is the Abdul. Uh, uh, guys, this is the Abdul, Zakaria Abdul. Uh, Zakaria, why you don't call me? As long you are a person who have a questions and we will make you ask the same exact question live on air and people they will hear you respond. What do you think guys? Do you think this potato he dare to call me? Right now. You ask me the question and we will laugh together. Lul, the punishment for women was pain when giving birth. What was the punishment for the man? And the hadith you quoted doesn't say anywhere. This is about Eve eating from the tree. Which hadith? Why you don't call me and tell me what hadith I'm talking? You are talking about Eve? Hmm? Well, look what your prophet saying. Your prophet saying that every woman, according to Muhammad, not according to me, is a whore. Because Eve, she was a whore and she betrayed her husband. Let us go back to the hadith so everybody will laugh at you. Here we go. The prophet said, had not, if it had been of the children of Israel, meat will not decay. So your stupid prophet claimed that the meat decay because of the Jews. He blamed the Jews for everything, even the beef damage because of uh, the Jews. And then he said, if not been for Eve, a woman would never have acted unfaithfully toward her husband. Actually, this is false translation. It says, khanat, khanat, which means betray. If you go down here, you see, they are saying here, and faithfully, that's a false translation. Here we go. This is the correct translation, Sahir Bukhari. It says, if we're not the children of Israel, meat would not decay. And if we're not of Eve, no woman would ever betray her husband. So you're a stupid prophet claiming that the woman, she betrayed her husband and she was a whore. 
And actually, I can show you your prophet saying against uh, Hawa. He said that each time Hawa, Uh, wanted to have a son his son die her son die so Satan he came to her and he told her if you name your son the slave of shaitan he will not die let me see if we can find the hadith here uh, give me a second <laughs> uh. All right, let's see this one. This one should work. Here we go. The prophet Sow so said, when Hawa, which means Eve, became a pregnant, a bliss came to her, and he and her children would not live after birth. And here you ask yourself, the Muslim, they claim that the death and life is only in the hand of Allah. It turned to be shaitan, he have control of death and life too. He said, name him Abdul Harith, which means the slave of shaitan. So she named him Abdul Harith. And he lived. And now we ask the stupid Muhammad if the first child for Eve was Abdul Harith, what is the first child name in the Quran for Adam and Eve? <laughs> it turned to be the story in the Quran of Cain and Abel is a, is a lie. The first baby, his name is Abdul Harith. And no child will live unless you call him a slave of Shaitan, Abdul Harith. This is one of the names of Shaitan, Harith. Do you see it? So now, how Muhammad can fix this stupidity? If the first baby ever born and live for Eve, his name is Abdul Harith. Who are they, the children of Adam, Cain, and Abel? Are you there as a Karaya? Do you, are you going to play dead? Are you going to play dead now? He will play dead. But we are not done. We are not done. Allah, he said, that Allah, he punished uh, Eve, And he said to her, you are going to be forced to be bretnet. And you are going to be forced to deliver it. You hate it. And you are going to be forced to have two menstruation a month. You Muslims, you, you Muslim women, they have two menstruation a month? That's strange, man. Let me show you the reference. Uh... <laughs> And now, you know, it looked like this guy, he did not read my response. They are stupid. Uh, as long you are saying that why God in the Bible, and I will go there to show, to show you what God, he punished the man too. You are stupid like your prophet. Uh, when your God, he says, I made you, and he's speaking about all the females, not only Eve. And this is the interpretation. Here we go. This is the official website of the government of Saudi Arabia. This is Tafsir al Baghawi, the master of uh, Osama bin Laden, Ibn Kathir. And here it says And Ibn Abbas, which means coming from his prophet, because Ibn Abbas he report what he learned from his prophet. He said, when he asked Adam, 
why you did this? He said, well, Lord, Eve, she decorated that for me. He said, all right, I will punish her that she will not get a great net except by force, rape, and she will not get delivery except by force, and she hated Karhan, which means something she hated badly. And I will make her bleed twice a month. And let us see the translation. Maybe you might say, Chris, it doesn't say that, CP. Huh? No, no, I have a different solution. It is a weak hadith. <laughs> They found a solution. I mean, you know, a weak hadith. Islam is a weak. Everything in Islam is weak. Let us change the language. Go to English. All right. Translate. And let me share the link with you. So the story here is about how Adam was deceived, uh, supposedly by the serpent. And here we see, you know, when the Muslim they speak about the serpent, what the problem with the serpent? Even your stupid religion copy the story from the Bible and that make you an idiot again, a mule. Then when Allah he asked Adam, why you did this? What was the reason you did this? Uh, Let us see. All of this is an attack on Eve. Okay. So an Iblis when you know, uh, uh, because Satan went in to enter, this is a false translation, it's not Jesus, uh, to Adam and Eve, uh, prevented him. Okay. And the servant was, uh, 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 and it was a friend of Shaitan. <laughs> It was one of the best animals. It had it had four legs, like four. <laughs> hey guys, snake used to have four legs, like 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 a camel. <laughs> I mean, who can beat that? Let us be honest. Who can beat that? So the snake. Mrs. Snake, she was a friend to Iblis. And she was one of the best animals, brother. Brothers and sisters. We will explain to you in details what happened. Mrs. Snake, she was a camel. Yes, brother. Okay? She was a camel, I'm telling you. And then... Where is the verse? Hold on. <laughs> so she was a snake, yes, but she had four legs like a camel. And she was the best of animals. And then, and it was one of the reservoirs of the paradise. Then Satan asked them to put him in her mouth. That's deep. Mm. So Shaitan, he asked the snake if he can go inside her. Now, I'm sure Zachariah, he wished he would never answer this questions because now everybody is laughing at this cartoon. See what you did to your prophet? Everybody is dying laughing at your religion. So Shaitan, he asked the snake, can you put me inside you from your mouth? Hmm? And here they are trying to explain to you. You see the question I ask? How Shaitan was able to get in after Allah kicked him out? <laughs> hold on, I need my coffee. I forgot my coffee in the other room. Just hold on. <laughs>
one day I will one day I will die in this chair laughing. What a good death. So Muhammad he is trying to explain his stupidity. How he told them that shaitan is already out of paradise and how he got in again. So shaitan, brother and sisters, huh? This guy has zero evidence. Uh, guys, listen, listen. This guy, he has zero evidence. I'm showing Tafsir al baghawi I'm showing the official Islamic website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I'm showing the interpretation of the story of Ibn Abbas. And now the Abdul, how he respond to this? Very easy. Doesn't say that CP. He have zero evidence CP. Everybody knows. Look, this hadith is reported by Susu. Susu told Mumu and Mumu told Fifi. And Fifi is very well known to be a liar, so it is not valid. <laughs> Do you see how easy they can refute you? Then you ask yourself, if those stories are not valid, why they are in the most important books to explain the Quran? Al-Baghawi, the Imam Al-Baghawi explaining the Quran and none of you Muslims say, hey, get lost. It doesn't say that, Baghawi. How come none of you says to Al-Baghawi, it doesn't say that, Baghawi? But you say that to me. So let us laugh and now you became a victim of your stupidity. Keep posting those questions, trying to defend Islam, but we laugh at you at the end. So brother and sisters, the treasury brother, the guards, Allah have guards in the heaven. Do you remember Muhammad, he went to the seventh heaven? Even Jibreel, he could not get in. He knocked at the door. The angels did not, did not even recognize Jibreel. They said, who is there? He said, I'm Jibreel. They said, who is with you? They said Muhammad. <laughs> so the stupid Muhammad now trying to explain how shaitan he get in. Aha! He did go inside the snake. Mm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Man, there is different story, by the way. Uh, uh, there is an animal. It's called al khuld Let me see if what is the name. You know this uh, this animal who dig in the ground. He's he's harmless. He's not like a you know. Let, let me show you his picture. I don't know what the name. In it. Uh, okay, it's uh, Mollis. They call him Mollis. Mollis, right? Let me show you the picture here. Now you know what I'm talking about. You know, if I'm not saying the name uh, correctly, you know what I'm talking about. So this is an animal who dig under the ground. So there's the other story here in the same in the same uh, uh, you know page that Shaitan he got in again. He, in this time, he was using this animal to get inside the heaven. And that makes sense, because this guy, he can dig under the door, brother. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, who can beat Muhammad's stories? Nobody can beat the stories, all right? So if you go here where it says uh, Hassan, uh, let us see where it says Hassan. Hold on. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, the translation here is not showing this anymore. You see the translation he's saying coming as immoral. This is not really the tran correct translation. It was about an animal, you know, uh, who is supposed he was helping them. Now a Muslim, he says, Oh, no, this is about a tree. Well, you know, the Arabic, it says here, let me see, let me uh, show the Arabic. So either your Arabic is a stupid, 
and he, he meant to, to say it's a, a moral or mortal, sorry, or he is speaking about the animal. Here it says, uh, he said, if it is khuldan, if it is, what it is, what is that? And then shaitan, he took advantage of that and he came from the direction of al khuld. So maybe what is meant here, it's about a mortal, and maybe it's about an animal. It's not very really clear. However, Shaitan, if he heard him, he heard him saying, "Maybe, maybe I can be a mortal." This is what it's meant in Arabic. And then Shaitan, he used that to get him, let us say, deceive him. Maybe this is what it meant. But Al Khuld is an animal who go under the ground and he dig. However, in the story here, the Muslim, they focus in the snake, which is uh, allow shaitan to go inside her from her mouth. And by doing that, he was able to go through the guards. So here you see. Always Google translation will not be very much accurate, but we are trying our best, you know, to to use it. So when the ser serpent, he was a friend to Shaitan, and it was one of the best animals, it had four legs like legs of camel. That you can imagine how high the, the, the snake was. I mean, do you know how big the, the legs of the camel? They are like, I don't know, five foot, four, four foot high, depending on the size of the camel. So the serpent, the snake used to be an animal with four legs and they are so big and it was the best animal in paradise and then shaitan he asked her to go inside her mouth and she let him get in and by doing that he was able to go through the guards while the guards do not know so she entered paradise and here you ask yourself what does that mean in order for the snakes to get into paradise, that means she was out of paradise. So why she is allowed to enter to paradise if she is exist already out of paradise? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Was this snake living abroad and came back? <laughs> How the snake, she enter paradise unless she is was out of paradise but if you go back here it says that this is was the best animal in paradise how she is the best animal in paradise and now she is entering paradise that means she is out of paradise so maybe this is snake according to muslims uh, you know, Adam and Eve, they live inside the paradise, but the snake, she's allowed to go out and, you know, take selfie and, you know, enjoy the world and, you know, go to, to Niagara Falls and to China and visit the wall of the Chinese and eat their food, spicy food, yummy, yummy, you know. So this serpent story is really amazing, brother. Hmm? And not only that, actually. Uh, In the story, uh, when the shaitan he enter into the into the snake, let me see. Uh, the translation really is not uh, giving it. Uh, it's it's right. Um, yeah, uh, Ibn Abbas, when when shaitan he deceived Adam, uh, and Allah, he ordered him to, you know, to uh, uh, to get out. Allah, he asked Adam, how this happened? How you ate from this tree and I told you not to eat? He said, Satan, he swear to me by Allah. <laughs> and this is exactly what the Quran said. The Quran says, that shaitan he swear by Allah that he is telling the truth to Adam 
And Adam believed him because Shaitan, he swear by Allah. If you read here with me, the rest, uh, Hassan he saw only at the gate of paradise because they were both coming out of it. And Adam was when he entered paradise, he saw that what was in it, in it or of Iblis. The translation here is not really, uh, you know, too good uh, to understand, but we will rephrase. Uh, Al Hassan saying that when Shaitan he saw him, he saw them first time, he saw them in the door of the heaven because they were getting out. What the heck? But the Quran saying that Shaitan he whispered to them when they are in the heaven. So how Shaitan he saw them when they are getting inside the heaven? So the Muslim now they're trying to fix the problem, saying that Shaitan he told them to eat from the tree before they get into the heaven. But if we go in the Quran, we will see that's not true. Read with me carefully. Allah, he ordered shaitan already to get out of the heaven. Allah said to Adam and Eve, live in the heaven. Don't eat from the tree. Shaitan, then he whisper to them. And this is why we see here in the story, they are trying to explain how shaitan was getting in when he was really kicked out already so he entered inside the snake and this is why Allah he cursed the snake because the snake she allowed shaitan to get in sneaking into the guard and this is why she called the snake so brother Zachariah are you proud hmm? any any Zachariah uh, here In fact, your prophet, he said the snake is a shaitan. Muhammad, he said, when you see a snake in your house, give him a warning to get out. The superstition, Muhammad. If he did not, if the snake did not leave after three days, he is a shaitan. Do you see it? Are you there, Zachariah? Prove the narration is Sahih. Well, I do not need to prove it. You need to prove it yourself. This is in your book, you stupid son of Muta. Are you asking me to prove that this is authentic? Is something written by your scholars in your book explaining the Quran? Isn't it? This is really awkward. So are you saying to me, you potato, that you Muslims are a bunch of a fraud? And you put in your books things which is not authentic donkey. And by the way, your prophet, he married Zainab Umi to Jash. Zainab, the daughter of the donkey, and his last name was a dog. So don't speak about animals. So when you ask me to prove it to you, that is the most awkward request ever from someone he believe in a stupid God, his name is Allah. Because if this is not the narration is authentic. Why your stupid Muslim scholars and the official government website of Saudi Arabia use it to explain the Quran? This is the logic of the generation of the Muta. Prove to me my religion. Can you believe what he just said to me? I challenge you. 
to prove that this is authentic. You stupid, you just screwed yourself. Because if it's not authentic and you Muslim use it, that means you are a fraud and you are not a trustworthy. Because why you use something not authentic to explain the Quran? Huh? Keep them coming, keep them coming. Yeah, post more. Come on, don't stop, don't stop. You know, we, you are the best comedy ever we have. Why you don't call me, man? Call me, call me. Allah will reward you, will make your penis longer. Your penis now is getting smaller and smaller each time you say something. Maybe you can get a victory. Hmm? And this is your prophet saying shaitan and a snake is one. Huh? Are you there? And then you are, and this is a say sahih. I challenge you to show me this is authentic. I challenge you, okay? We Muslim, we lie a lot. We have a lot of lies about our Prophet. We say things the Prophet never said. We are Muslims, remember? We are daif. We are very daif, like Allah, diarrhea. Are you there? Hmm? And then, Brother and sisters, Allah, he decided to punish Eve. Let us go back. We are not done, are we? So Allah, he does, he do, you know, he wanted to punish Eve. <laughs> so shaitan, he swear by Allah. Shaitan, he swear by Allah. Adam, he believed shaitan because he swear by Allah. <laughs> and by the way, do you know where Adam he leaned down? Let me show you here. The easiest way is to search for a word in the translation. Brother, brother. And then Allah he sent him down to the earth, meaning Adam and Eve, Satan and serpent, all of them in one location. Where? In India, brother. In a mountain called Nud. Nud. Ah. Aha. Yeah, makes sense at that time. If she have no bra. Aha. Do you remember Mufti uh, uh, Mink when he said that Allah he sent Adam to India, Sri Lanka specifically, brother? Let me let me uh, let me find the video so we can love more. Oh look, still I have this video from yesterday. Oh boy, I click at YouTube page, and then okay, uh, you know I just forgot what I was going to talk about. What was the topic? This is an Islamic Dawah TV, by the way, in case you do not know. <laughs> stop, stop. Okay, stop. <laughs> Need a search for the for Mufti Mink. Mink is better. All right. Uh, You know, I find it very funny that a Muslim is speaking about logic. You know, logic. I mean, come on, this is a religion of logic. Huh? What's wrong with people? Why they don't see the truth? A Muslim, he want to teach you about logic. Listen carefully and enjoy. And if those references are not true, why your scholars are quoting them? He, he, was, he wasn't just thrown so that suddenly he landed, meaning he dropped, but Allah placed him on the earth. Where? This we find in the narration of Rasulullah where he says, that Adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind. Oof. He came down in what is known as the Indo-Pak subcontinent. 
precisely precisely sri lanka oh boy there is a mount there known as adam's peak that's deep if you go there uh -huh. you will find it green and beautiful as though it is not from this earth but it is i'm not trying to imply anything like right away he have to say but hey, hey so you know i did not say it is not from ever no 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 i did not because they will kill him you know the terrorism but i'm just saying it is so beautiful maybe because the sri lankans have kept it that way hmm. but it's a beautiful place it is it is said that there is a possibility that that is the place we don't know for certain that that spot is the place but roughly then what about hawa where did she come down where where in jidda if 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 where is Jidda? Where? Jidda is in the Arabian Peninsula. Oof, in oof. What we know today is Saudi Arabia. Brother and sisters, true story. So you see how Allah is merciful? Allah, he sent the wife and the husband in one location. There's only a few thousand miles between them. In the time when there is no airplane, there is no cars. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You know, by the way, Zachariah, I wasn't planning to come today, but thank you. You, you encouraged me to come. So, guys, let us open the map. I will open the map. What we can do? I mean, what we have no solution. in. Uh, <laughs> Zachariah. <laughs> yeah, remember the name of Zachariah, what he means. He is copying a name, proving his prophet to be false. Because Yahweh is not part of his religion. What a fraud cult. The stupid Muhammad, he copy names. Not only he copies stories. And the more he copy, the more he get himself screwed. So this is, brother and sisters, this is Sri Lanka. Brothers. Vogas, Vogas with me. This is Sri Lanka. Look, let us, let us, let us zoom in Sri Lanka. So brother Adam was sent here and Sri Lanka is not connected to India. You see here, there's a, there's a missing link here. There's, you cannot walk. This is a very huge distance. It might be looked like small in the map, but it's not something you can cross by swimming unless you are like me, maybe Superman, man, I'm unbelievable. You know, by the way, once I was swimming, I crossed the Atlantic, the Pacific, uh, the, you know, I, I, I went to uh, the, uh, the the North Pole and then the South Pole. But I have to be honest, in the North Pole, I froze. I mean, I was really so cold. But thanks to Allah, I recite the chapter of Horni in the Quran and I get so hot, you know? And that was a solution. And this is a true story and this is not authentic hadith. <laughs> so look what happened. Allah, he sent, and the Muslim, he speak always about logic. Like, how, can you debate us about the Trinity? Every Muslim want to debate you about the Trinity. The Trinity is not logical, brother. But there are prophets saying, Shaitan, sorry, Allah, he sent Shaitan and Adam in Sri Lanka. Any Sahih Hadith proof that Adam landed in Sri Lanka? You son of Muta, are you okay? Are you okay? So guys, any Sahih Hadith proof that Adam was landed in Sri Lanka? So if it is not Sahih Hadith, why you Muslims are using it? And why you don't go there and get him busted? Why we don't see one Muslim saying this is stupid? Can you show me one video of a Muslim from those who they try to respond to us, that those dummies who don't dare to call me, saying this is not true? Go ahead. The second we read it and we show people how stupid Islam is, you take a turn and you say, show me. Show me where is the proof that Adam landed in Sri Lanka. Can you show me? Hmm. I just did, you idiot. I just showed you the Muslim books, your scholars, the companions, and even your prophet quotations. When a Muslim, he tried to deny what is written in his books. This is a clear sign of shame. You know, this is a clear sign of shame. Because why they want to deny something? They believe in it for the last 1400 years. And if it's not true, why it is in their books? 
and why their sheikhs they speak about it even in TV. After we caught it, they bite their tongue and their tail and they see how stupid their religion is. So what we do? We go in the state of denial and we deny what it says. But remember one thing, Abdul. Those things will not help you because you deny as much as you want. It is there. And people are laughing at you. And when you ask me to prove to you, and you are yet the Muslim, and yet this is your books. And then you say to me, can you prove to me authentic? Islam is not based in anything authentic, be my witness. Islam is just a bunch of fairy tales. Muhammad is a fraud. And he is a liar. All reference lead us to one direction. Islam is not authentic. And this is the only way Muslim they think they can defend their religion. In this hadith here in the front of me, and this is interpretation here, this is Tafsir uh, al Manthur, Adur al Manthur. The same chapter we are reading, verse number 36. Here it says, the same as it says in the other tafsir. And this is reported from Ibn Mas'ud and Ibn Juraj and the companion, and the for sure they learned that from Muhammad. It says here that Iblis, he, uh, uh, he wanted to enter the heaven after Allah, he ordered Adam and Eve to enter heaven. So he came to the snake and she was an animal who have four legs, exactly like in that story. And those legs like the legs of a camel. And she was from most beautiful, sexy animal. So he spoke to her to let him get in from her mouth. So she can enter upon into Adam and she did. And then the snake, she uh, uh, went through uh, the guards and she went into like here it says khazna which is like a board like she goes as, as, as through a board uh, like a cloth, closet and she entered when they are not al khazna sorry he see I think they mean here al khazna not al khazna al khazna those are the guards yeah so here uh, she entered and the guard did not notice and this is explanation when he spoke, he spoke from her mouth. So according to your stupid Quran, and the explanation from your Quran, which you are making fun of the Bible, the shaitan, he was inside the snake when he spoke to Adam. And he said, Hey Adam, I am going to lead you to the tree of eternity. And you will have eternal kingdom. And he swear by Allah, I am advising you. Adam, he refused to eat from it. Then Eve, she sat and she ate from the tree. And then she said to Adam, why you don't eat from the tree? Nothing happened to me. Eat. So when he ate, they saw their vaginas and their private part. And then here it says, from Ibn Juraj, from Ibn Abbas, he said, that the enemy of Allah, Iblis, aka Satan, he exposed himself to the animals to carry him, so he can enter the heaven. This is what he did to the snake, right? Uh, 
So the snake, she put him between her two, ma her two uh, uh, teeth and she entered him inside her. So when he spoke, he spoke from inside her and she used to be wearing clothing and she used to have four legs. Then Allah, he stripped the snake and he made her walk on her belly. And then Ibn Abbas, he said, kill it wherever you find it. Protect the teaching of Allah. Let us use Google Translation. And now this guy, he will say, it doesn't say that, CP. I sentence you to prove to be true, CP. Here we go. Oh boy. We go to the top. This is the book of Adurul Manthur. Hmm? And this is the verse number 36. And this is Ibn Juraij and etc. and Ibn Abbas saying, I don't know why this part is not translated. Here it says, the rest of what I was reading for you, you know. So uh, Shaitan, he wanted to enter paradise. So he come to the serpent and it was an animal who had four legs, like the legs of a camel. And it was the best of the animals. So he entered in her mouth and between her, her two teeth, the translation is not coming right. And then he said to Adam, shall I guide you for a tree, which you will have eternity and you will have a kingdom will never go away, you know, forever. And then, uh, you know, he spoke through the snake, as you see. Uh, and then here it says, the enemy of Allah, Satan, offered himself to the beast, like the snake, under of the earth, that they would carry him until they entered the paradise with them and spoke to Adam. All the beasts refused to do so until he spoke to the serpent. So your shaitan, he was trying, he went to the rabbit. Hey rabbit, uh, uh, Abdullah, I'm talking about you. Hey rabbit. <laughs> Abdullah, prove to me that you are not a rabbit and you would like to call me. What do you think guys? Prove to me that you are not a rabbit and you are, shaitan is not inside you, and you call me, what do you think? Are you a rabbit? You are a rabbit, it's for sure. So here, shaitan, he spoke to all animals, all of them they refuse, except the serpent, brother, unbelievable. And you know, remember, Zechariah was saying, why God, he cursed the snake? Why? Why God, he cursed the snake, huh? What the heck is that? What the snake have to do with the story, huh? Zechariah, this is what you said to me, remember? <laughs> Rabbit. Then it says here, so until he spoke, he spoke to the snake or the serpent, and uh, you know, uh, and then Allah, he you know, he said to her, uh, the curse. Allah, he cursed uh, the snake. You know, Allah, he cursed the snake. And Abdul, and then Allah, he took off her clothes and he took off her legs and he made her uh, uh, naked. Brother, is that true? That Allah, he take off her clothes? Huh? You think it's what you want to do? You think it's what you want to do? Yeah? Uh, and you Abdul? So when Abdul, he want to speak about logic and about what makes sense and about, uh, you know, is that fair or not fair? Uh, we see that Allah, he punish women. Ah, we missed the part, actually. We did not go to the part where it says, um, uh, I think we skipped that part. Hold on. Allah, he punished, uh, did we show it in the screen where it says that Allah, he punished uh, Eve and he made her have administration twice a week? Did we show that in the screen or not yet? I think we did not. Um, did you read that, uh, that part about Eve?
No? Okay, let's find it in the translation. We'll go back to the previous page. Uh, okay. Let us see. And did I pause the links or not yet? I think I did not. Let, let, let me pause this one before I forgot. This is the, uh, the Al-Baghawi Tafsir. Let me pause it. And I will pause the other one to you. Save it, make reference about it, the story. And the other one is Durrun Manthur. Oh, this one I need to shorten the link. I will do it later. So I just go back now. Um. All right. So this is the the same page I just posted for you here. And here you will see it says, let me show you where it says that. From Suaid ibn Jubair an Abbas, that when Adam he ate from the tree, which Allah he forbid him from eating from it, uh, Allah said to Adam, Why you did that? He said, uh, the one who made that look sound good, it was Eve. And uh, Allah, he said, well, I'm going to punish her. I will I punish her that she will carry child against her will. And she will deliver a child in something in a way she hated. And I will make her bleed ministration twice a month. And that will go to the daughter of Eve, not only for her. All right. In the same page, just to show you how to find this thing here, you will see like this part here is in a brown. You see it's a brown. All right. So the part which is night right away underneath of it, where you should find this exactly. Just to make it easier for you to find that part. You go and find the brown part, like here, in the English translation. We use Google translation. This is the brown part in the in the page. Then here it says, Sa'id ibn Jubair from Ibn Abbas. When Adam ate from the tree, it was which was forbidden, Allah, he said to, to him, what, what you did? He said, Lord, Eve decorated that to me. So he said, I, I will punish her, punish her, not flawed her. I punished her to bear nothing but anyone, which means against her will, and to get uh, to carry a child against her will, to hate it, and to get deliver a child against her will, to hate it, and she will, this translation is false, and she will bleed it twice a month. And that goes all the way to her daughters. And then the stupid Zechariah was saying to me, well, if Eve is the one who did what she did, why, what, happened to Eve as a penalty will go to their children. And here you see that Muslims, when they make fun of the Christians believing in the original sin, proving to us again that their prophet is a monkey. He is like a donkey who carry books in the top of his back, as the Quran say, yet he do not know what those books mean. Because you just admitted that the penalty does not go for the sinner only, but for the one who is born of the sinner, according to your belief. Is Zechariah there? And why we are not in heaven right now, Muslims? Is that because only Adam pay for his sin? 
No, because you pay for his sin too. If we go to the hadith, which is again an initial proof of Muhammad's stupidity, you remember when Adam and Moses, uh, they have an, a debate. Don't ask me how Adam and Moses, they met. Muhammad, he make everybody meet. I mean, you know the thing. So Adam was accused by Moses that because of you, we are out of heaven. Because of you, we are out of heaven. Adam, he said to Moses, and I see all of this is authentic, very authentic. So the game of authentic, not authentic will not work. So Adam, he said to, to the Moses, are you blaming me for a fate written by Allah before 30, 40 years before my creation? 40 years before my creation, it was a fate. And here we see that all the story in the Quran, which Muhammad is adopting from the Bible, which is half of it is, is fabrication, according to his quotation, is destroyed. Why? Because it was not Shaitan who, you know, who deceived Adam. It was not really Eve. It was the plan of Allah. It was a fate. Do you see it? And this is additional proof too that Moses is a person believe in the original sin, and he is not a Muslim. Because how, who are Moses, and suppose this is after death, how Moses, he is a Muslim, and yet he died, and yet he did not know that believing in original sin is against Islam. Are we following, guys? We are talking about someone, he is a major prophet according to the Muhammadan. So how this guy, he spent his life as a prophet of Allah. And yet he come accusing Adam of original sin when Muslims do not believe in original sin. So this is a hadith you can use to get them busted when they say that Moses was a Muslim. Additional to that, Muhammad, he agree with the argument of Adam that it was a fate, it was a decree. It was not really his sin. He said to him clearly, do you blame me for an action? Which means you cannot blame me. Do you blame me? Listen carefully. Do you blame me? Let me highlight it if you are blind. For action which Allah had written in my faith 40 years before my creation. So what does that mean? We cannot blame Adam for any sin he did. So all the story the Muslim they come with in the Quran is a fabrication because why Allah is asking Adam why you did that if it was a fate anyway and he wrote it for him 40 years. What this drama is about? Do you see the stupidity? If Allah is the one who caused Adam to do it and he wrote it as a fate, as a decree, then how and why the stupid Allah asking Adam, Hey Abdul Adam, why you did that, huh? Hey Allah, forgive me please Allah, it was if, if he made me believe in it. Look, what the heck? It was, a, it was a theater. It was an act. Allah, he wrote the scenario. Adam, he said the words. And Eve, she practiced the movie. It's in the front of you. And that means all our sin is a fabrication in Islam because Allah is the one who decided and he made a sin. If you read here in the story, you will see Adam, he is, you know, he's a crying. He's a crying. Huh? If it was Eve, what, what the heck? And then we find that the, this is not the fault of Eve, it was the fault of the devil Allah. Allah, He made Eve say what she said. Allah, He made Eve act as she act. Allah even made Shaitan go inside the snake because it was a fate. The whole story was a fate. Do you see it? All this story, it turned to be a fate. And when Adam, he commits sin, he start asking Allah for forgiveness. He start weeping. 
Hmm? Hein? Allah said to Adam, didn't I permit, like, uh, uh, forbid you from eating from the tree? He said, yes, Lord, by your honor, I did not think that it has anyone by swear by, you know, by you liar. That's true. You know, the translation is very weird. You know, the shaitan, he swear by Allah, you know, he was a liar. They eat from the tree and they learned. I mean, translation is really horrible here. Uh, but look at this. Why you did that? Why you did that, Adam? What made you do that? He said, oh, Lord, it's Eve, Eve, you know, she was wearing short skirt. And man, her boobs is so big, I could not resist the banana there and the apple. She put the apple between her breast. And now I was confused because all of them, they look like an apple. So she said, by the one in the middle. What the heck? This is your religion. And look at Zechariah now, he's dead. Zechariah is not even here. He is not here. Ah. Yeah. Any Zechariah? Well, Zechariah before is not the same as Zechariah after. Do you see why they don't dare to call me? Because we have all your laundry. And by the way, I'm going to go right now to my yard, see if I can find a snake and I will ask her to go inside her so I can go to Walmart and do shopping for free. Everybody will run away from me. And actually I will find a hole in the wall and go and do shopping. And you know, like uh, the snake will do shoplifting. If they arrest the snake, they arrest the snake. You know, it's not me. I'm not in, I have nothing to do with her. The second the police, they come, I come out of the snake and say, see, it was the snake, not me. The snake, capture the snake. Abdul, Chaitan, he get inside the snake. By the way, what he gave the snake in return? A rat? Hmm? What he seduced the snake with? Potatoes. All right. All Muslims, they can debate me but in comments and the second they made a comment they regret their comment and they delete it go to home depot and buy some rat poison my friend poison is forbidden in saudi arabia since the prophet was killed by a rat poison so you have to come with better plan you know uh, like what, what happened yesterday i want to mention it about Salma rushdie those cowards, they prove to us again and again that Islam is satanic. And they help us actually to prove our point. Islam is not a religion. Islam is not for a human. Islam is satanic. Cult should be banned. Islam is against a humanity. So I say to those stupid atheists who always defend Islam in CNN and whatever BN, and you know, look at this Joe Biden. How come Joe Biden, when a Muslim, he was killed? Where it was, what's the state? I forgot. We made a video about it. He go and he, you know, like he, uh, he st we stand with the Muslim. And later we found that the one who killed the Muslims, it was a Muslim. Joe Biden, he never opened his mouth. This is a very famous author, and he is coming from England. He's not even American. It's a shame for America what happened. Joe Biden, the son of Mutai, the coward, and Nancy Pelosi, and all the donkeys in the White House and the Democrat Party, nobody opened his mouth. If anything happened, oh, we are against hate. We are against hate, you know, hate. The Christian teaching hate, they are against abortion. When, the, when a terrorist attack happened in USA, in New York, in the heart of the democratic population, they go silence. What is the one who go against hate crimes? Don't you agree that Islam is a hate crime itself? The Quran says it clearly that Allah, Allah, 
he will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians. Chapter 5, verse number 14. The Quran say clearly that the most enemies for Muslims are the Jews. Why you don't ban the Quran? The Quran say clearly that they should fight them and kill them. Why this book is not banned? Chapter 5, verse number 64 says the most enemies for Muslims are the Jews. Chapter 5, verse number 14 saying Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians until the day of judgment. Chapter 9, verse number 29, it says go and kill the Christians and the Jews. And we can quote tons and tons of verses. When you allow such a satanic book and you allow such a satanic religion to be practiced, when Allah, he says, he will spread hatred between the Jews. It's in the front of you. Chapter 5, verse number 64. How you accept such a book? Aren't you against bigotry? Stereotype? People keep complaining about my books. They cannot find them on Amazon. They have only three of my books. The rest is up here. Amazon siding with Muslims with no question. I just need some time to post my videos in other forms, platforms, my, my, my books, so they cannot stop it. Chapter 5, verse number 82, it says, The most enmity to you, Muslims, is the one who call themselves Jews. The book of hatred. Chapter 5, verse number 51, it says, Take not Christians and Jews as a friends. Islam teach hatred. It's not me who don't want to take a Muslim as a friend. It is Islam forbidding Muslims from taking us as a friends. So when you give a citizenship in USA to a Muslim, you are giving it to someone. He have no loyalty to your country. He's not even allowed. It is like a snake inside the house. The snake is a sneaky. She is soft. He will say to you, I'm your friend. Chapter 3, verse number 28. It says, you can lie to them. Speak as if it is you are a friend to them, but your heart is like this. If you don't believe me, here we go. Chapter 3, verse number 28. We don't say things from our mouth. We don't make things up. This is the website owned by the King of Jordan. The one who USA sent billions of dollars from your money, American, every year. We pay for their army. We pay for their security. We pay for their police. We pay for their bread. This is your friend, the King of Jordan. This is Quran, chapter 3, verse number 28. And this is the cousin of Muhammad explanation. A believer, he cannot take the Jews or the Christians as a friend. And if one of them, he seek honor and he take them as a friend, and he means so. He has no honor, no mercy, no protection from Allah, which means Muslim can kill him, can rape his wife, can take his children as sex slaves. Unless yet but guard yourself against them, save yourself from them, speaking toward them, or taking it as security, saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them with, while your heart dislike this. Do you see the snake? People, do you see the snake? This is the snake. When they shake hands with you and they say we are friends, they are not. They are lying to you. A Muslim, he cannot take you as a friend. It's against Islam. If he do so, he is not a Muslim no more. So how they say to me, I'm your friend. How come I visit them? They are nice to me because they are trying to convert you. It's a trick. 
Otherwise, the Quran says it clearly, the one who take them as a friend, he is one of them. He is one of them. Do you see it? You are not one of us no more. You are one of them. And who is them? The enemy of Allah, the enemy of Islam. And this is what is really making me uh, uh, upset when I see the ignorance in the West. When you see a woman, she says, I must have a Muslim friend. She doesn't know that she is taking you as a friend just to try to convert you, to find you a boyfriend. And later he will say to you, I cannot marry you unless you convert to Islam. They call it jihad love. This is how they were able to marry the daughter of Bill Gates. Jihad love. This is how they were able to convert Muhammad Ali, the idiot. Sneaky. They cannot take you as a friend. And then they go to the African and they say to them, Islam is against slavery. And when we find that Muhammad is the biggest slave owner, buyer, and seller. Slavery, slavery was a flourishing in the time of Muslims, and all the slaves in the USA was captured by the white Muslims in North Africa. Go check the history. The white man, he go to Morocco to buy slaves. He go to Libya, and then now in Libya there's camps of slavery. They speak too much about good and ethic, but they have zero. All of this proved to us that Islam is nothing but a satanic cult, and they have no limit how low they can go.